Queen Mary Ghosts and Airship Sightings of the 1800s. Would you like to start, Joffrey? You want me to start? Sure. Okay. Give me my notebook. There you go. Dude, I asked you one thing. To, to hold it? To not close my notes. <laughs> <laughs> to like that. Well, we, under, we were under a lot of stress trying to figure out the audio. So... So he had to close his notebook? Thank Jordan. Oh, that's what that was. I was laughing and I was slapping the notebook together and I didn't realize I was closing your pages as I was doing that. Okay, I found them. Sorry, bud. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. No, it's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. In 1896 in California, there was a cluster of airship sightings and it began... um, yeah, it began in California, and it started to creep east into America. And I should preface this with, I think I saw where that the first actual airships were flown in Germany in the 1850s, I think it was. Like Zeppelins? I don't think they were quite Zeppelins yet. But um, no, no, these, these ones were different. People claimed to see the pilots that were flying them, because like, sometimes they flew super low. And some claim to even meet like meet the pilots, and they were thought to be human, but they dressed and acted really strangely. So I'll just dive right into like the stories of them, like okay. not background or anything. And uh, so in Sacramento, in on November seventeenth, eighteen ninety six, people saw a very bright white light coming from an egg shaped craft that was that had downward facing propellers, and it was like flying over the city for about half an hour and it changed direction like pretty quickly multiple like multiple times and it was said that it was swaying side to side and like up and down like kind of like a boat on water like if a wave were like waves were like hitting it it was kind of like bobbing in the air yeah and uh the next pe- the next night people saw the same light flying in the opposite direction over the city so later the same craft was seen again on November 22nd so 5 days later but there were two lights on it instead of the one. And people again saw moving parts like wings or propellers. Some people said wings. Some people said propellers. I didn't know if that's just like how they're explaining it or they actually saw something different. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, people like policemen, streetcar drivers, car barn employees, which I don't know what a car barn is. I don't know either. Because there wasn't, I don't think there was cars in the 18. 18- Hundred wasn't that like nineteen oh five or something? I think the late eighteen hundreds or eighteen nineties. Oh, okay, so like maybe, maybe that was like uh, kind of before they had parking lots figured out. I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe. Hell, they they might not even be talking about our form of cars. Yeah, like what we what, think of them. That's well, what I mean. I don't know what a car barn. Yeah, is, yeah I don't think it was until like the thirties when car people actually started buying cars, and then not even like average people could afford them. And that's yeah. what Henry Ford did with like making the Model T and stuff. Yeah. Well, yes. anyway, I don't know what a car barn is, but car barn employees and a conductor saw the lights. And when it said policemen, I feel like you kind of like sh- need to trust the policemen because like they kind of have like a reputation to hold up. Yeah, but that's kind of and the, that's oh, questionable and now. I'm talking about the 1800s. But uh, <laughs> any threw me off, man. <laughs> find, let me find my notes. Oh, even the mayor of San Francisco's two servants said they saw the lights, and the mayor, like, vouched for them, so they must have been, like, really trustworthy, or he saw them, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so, a few days after, people in San Jose, Tacoma, Washington, and Western Canada saw the lights, too. So, like, they started going north mm-hmm. as well. And people kept seeing the lights throughout December, but the sightings eventually died out. Some people thought the craft was a mysterious inventor testing a new craft, but... It was it, like it was never unveiled or anything, so nobody knows what it was. Like nobody ever came forward and said that they did it, except wait. Kind of except for one, which I'll get into later. But um, after about a month and a half of nothing else happening, on February second, eighteen ninety seven, um, a new rash of sightings popped up in Nebraska, and started to spread to places like Omaha, Kansas City, Nashville, Chicago. Um, there's more. There's Evanston, Illinois, Waterloo, Iowa, Wisconsin, and Indiana by the end of April. And a lot of at the time, people only saw the light, but some people saw the actual airships. Said they were over 200 meters long, and they said, but most of them were 10 to 60 meters long. So, like, I don't know if there was multiple airships that they were seeing, or if there's just people like wanting to get in on it and just like each telling their own story. 
mm-hmm. that they made up. But uh, some were said to have propellers or wings, some fixed wings, some moving wings. <laughs> they're just the moving wings. <laughs> they're just going like this. <laughs> And some were suspended from giant balloons, which I think they mean like hot air type balloons, yeah. not just like a bunch of balloons. But um, the first encounter where somebody said they met the pilot was in Sacramento on November 19th. Colonel H.J. Shaw said he encountered two tall, lanky Martians who were flying in a football shaped craft, and the craft was completely silent as it flew. And a majority of the other claims were like way different than that. And uh, they claimed to meet everyday Americans who said they bragged about the extreme potential for their new aircraft, and they asked the people they met for, like, small favors. Um, there's an article from April 16th, 1897. Um, C.G. Williams of Green- Greenville, Texas, claimed he was asked to mail letters for the crew of a brilliant lighted sh- airship that landed in a field. The ship was sh- cigar-shaped with Corrugated wings. I don't even know what does corrugated mean. Uh, I don't know. I'll look it up. Okay. With corrugated wings, a fan-like tail, and a propeller at the front, the pilot said that he expected to revolutionize travel and transportation when he revealed his craft to the public. Two days later, Colonel Tom Peoples of the Millen County of Millen County, Texas, saw a giant winged airship that flew like a buzzard, cast its shadow over some workers on his farm. It came to a hover over an artificial lake, then unfurled a number of colored bullets. Color, fuck, colored banners and shot strange lights into the air. Did you? Yes. What? Corrugated means it has grooves. <laughs> oh, so like grooved wings? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That sounds so, like a groovy. So it's kind of like those roofs that people have, those metal roofs. Oh, okay. It's the same thing. Okay. Um, but he said he saw the leader of the craft, and he said the leader said he was from a little town in the interior of New York. He explained the airship was on a cross-country test flight and begged Williams, don't give this thing away. We are experimenting with this vessel. So far, it's a success. According to TexasAlmanac.com, a report from Waxahachie, I don't know how to say that really, but um, said the airship, the airship was being operated by a woman and the witness thought that the airship and crew was of satanic or demonic Origin. But that's just because like people back then yeah. were like way more religious, so they see something they don't understand. They're like, "It's the it's the devil." <laughs> but uh, like girls are the devil. Girl, they're the devil. Where to clarify? It's from the Water Boy. We don't hate women. Just thought I should say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in April, eighteen ninety seven, J B Lee. J.B. Ligon. I've noticed that back in the 1800s, almost all the names were two initials and then the last name. <laughs> it just—it seems very Western to me. But um, he said he saw some lights in a close-by pasture, so him and his son went to investigate it. They found four men who were standing next to a large, dark object. Let me flip my page. And they asked him for water. One of the men said his name was Wilson, and he said that, uh, that this was only one of five ships he had secretly built so like I said before how I didn't know if people were making it up or their actual war or they were actually multiple ships apparently this guy said there were five of them that he made shit so just keep that in mind and a quote from the article said it had four large wings like a dragonfly and propellers at its bow and stern so that mean, I think that means on its side on the sides right is what? that what the bow and stern is oh uh, like the front and the back oh okay <laughs> So, and the day after that, Sheriff H.W. Baylor, like another one of those Western names, encountered three men outside his house in Uvadale, Texas. Uvadale. God. But uh, they landed behind it in one of those strange airships, and one man again, one man again, identified himself as Wilson from Goston. Gosh, uh, fuck. Galveston. No, it's Goshen. Oh. Goshen, New York. And then, like, right now, I'm just, I'm just going through a bunch of stories of people, like, quick encounters of people saying it. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> on April 18th, Judge Love from Waxahachie, Waxa Texas, met five men who were strangely dressed, relaxing and smoking pipes by one of the airships. They said they were from the land beyond the polar seas, and they were Ooh. descendants of the last of the l- ten lost tribes of Israel. And uh, the airship... what. They were flying was shaped like a cigar, 
and it had three pairs of wings that flapped. <laughs> so it was like a huge tube with flapping <laughs> wings. So. You think they jumped over the ice wall? Maybe. Because Earth is flat. Yeah. yeah. No dispute. I think, yeah, I think we all can agree. <laughs> I'd rather shoot myself than believe that. <laughs> but the same day there, that an airship reportedly crashed and had a Martian body in the wreckage, a cattle farmer named Alexander Hamilton, which no. was a president. No. I don't, no, it's not the same guy, I don't think. I don't think it's the same guy. Let's just pretend. Okay. Alexander, Alexander Hamilton said... One of the airships flew over and grabbed one of his cows with a noose and took it. <laughs> <laughs> he said that he found it later butchered in a nearby field. And the supposed body of the Martian that I said like a couple sentences ago is still buried in an Aurora, Texas graveyard. But due to like laws and stuff, they can't dig it up to actually see no. if it's like just a regular person or not. Well, that's dumb. Yeah. D-U-M. D-U-M. And that's how you spell it. Yes, it is. So then, later... Wait, I thought it was D-U-M-N. No. Yeah, sometimes, depends. Ah, sorry. But later in Farms, Farmersville, Texas, a person saw the airship, and it must have been fairly close because they saw the three men in its cabin singing, N- Nearer my God to thee and drinking alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> so they were just drunk <laughs> flying an airship singing. <laughs> what if they're just time travelers? Don't you think they'd be more sophisticated, though? Like, with the craft? <laughs> not huge floating balloons with wings? What if, well, like... Oh, no, what if it's... It seems really steampunk to me. Or it could be a dimensional slip where it's just the dumb side of society. Or what if that's, like, the... <clears throat> what if they came from, like, hundreds of years ago, and that's all they had, and over time, as they kept traveling, they built more and more onto it? What if it was a dimensional slip, but that their technology is like different than ours. So we had regular yeah. blimps, but they had these weird fucked up wings. <laughs> wing blimps. <laughs> but uh, Dr. E. Stewart, an educated authority in metaphysics, which back then I don't know if that was like an actual thing, but metaphysics is a branch of philosophy that deals with concepts like being, knowing, substance, cause, identity, time, and space. He said he wasn't convinced that the airships were real. And uh, he said they were the result of hypnotism and bad whiskey. Yeah. I, so, feel, like, I feel like that's possible. Yeah, but every, like all the hundreds of people were all hypnotized and drunk. Yeah, but think about saw. it. They were making, if they were making bad whiskey that has bacteria in it, it's probably going to make you like trip out. But they're all going to see airships because of it? Well, maybe group one convinced the other. Hmm? What if one convinces the other that they all see this airship? All well, that's group hysteria. All throughout Canada and all the different states of... Yeah country <laughs> well they weren't all described it's the same though no but the guy also said he had five different airships that he built <laughs> no no god damn it. oh no i'm just saying i hope they were real because it sounds cool mm-hmm. but uh and an accredited authority in dallas wait acronautic acronautical air fuck me <laughs> my handwriting sometimes gets so fucking bad when I'm taking these notes. <laughs> it's aeronautical, not acronautical. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in that the last podcast when I said uh, uh, habitual. Habitual? <laughs> for, yeah, for Mars. Acronymical? When actually... No, you it, said hab- habitual or something. Habitual. <laughs> yeah, like it's a habit. <laughs> yeah. Hab- habitat. That wasn't, yeah. I meant, like, you can live there, so inhabitable. Oh, inhabitable. And then the uh, other word was uninhabitable, and we couldn't think of it. We couldn't think of either. Yeah. <laughs> but uninhabitable means you can't live there. Yes, and inhabitable means you can't. Anyways. Okay. Yes. An aeronautical authority in Dallas said he hadn't seen the ship, and he says, I don't drink, and I never come downtown after dark. Keep in mind, this was an aeronautical authority in the 1800s. So, like, how are you an authority in aeronautics when... Like, it doesn't exist. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, it kind of existed, but like, it was it was well, in I, infancy. They yeah. must have been studying well, birds. They didn't even name him, so I'm not. Yeah, I'm not really believing that he's an actual aeronautical yeah. authority. But um, yeah, they couldn't even grasp the idea of what was able to fly, really, because all they pretty much had was like balloons. Anyway, many people have said. That the uh, sightings of the airship was the first of events of, first of the events of the final days described in the Bible. Hmm. So it's not technology, it's the world ending. <laughs> <laughs> well, the world didn't end, so you know. Yeah. But we're getting close now. 
Um, I think every generation thinks the world's ending. Yeah, but we're like the closest. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like that has been. What about the bubonic plague? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's coming back. Did you hear about that? They have, like, the cure for it though. Antibiotics, but if you don't get them in time, you're fucked. Yeah, if you don't get it in time, but like. Yeah, Everyone's gonna be, rush. You'll be fine. And then. Maybe. <laughs> But um, a week after the last airship sighting, a group of people going to church in Merkel, Texas, saw an airship stop in the air, dropped an anchor that grabbed onto a railroad, <laughs> grabbed onto a railroad tie, and then a couple minutes later, they saw a small being shimmy down the rope. And when he got to the bottom, he cut the rope, and the airship just sailed away and was never seen again. <laughs> what the hell? So this is where we've come to the point in my research where I told you. I got old newspaper articles. Yeah. And the people sounded so dumb. <laughs> Wonderful. This Whoa. first one's not as bad, but the second article I got is just is <laughs> profound <laughs> stupidity. But uh, I found a website. It's chroniclingamerica.loc.gov. And you can just, like, choose the year and the state and then type in keywords. And it'll just bring up articles from newspapers, like, everywhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the Austin Weekly Statesman... Uh, Thursday, June 3rd, 1897, the titled, The Airship Sighted Again, said, Last night a telephone message came to the statesman office. Which statesman is the Austin Weekly Statesman? The, just the newspaper office. It says, uh, Last night a telephone message came to the statesman office from Nanner's, tel- Nanner's store. <laughs> Nanner's? N-A-N-O-R's. I, I don't want to say Nanor because I don't like it. So, <laughs> Nanner's store, close to Webersville, Stating that Jack Wood B. Jack Wood B. F. Scallern and a Mr. Edwards had seen the mysterious airship about 8:30 last night. Messrs. Wood, wait, Messrs. I looked up Messrs. and that just means multiple Misters. <laughs> so, <laughs> Misters. Wood and Scallern first came to the store, reporting that they had seen it and got giving a description of it. Shortly after, Mr. Edwards came in and reported that he'd also seen it while on the road from Weberville to Dun- Dunlop. The descriptions given by these people tally, except that Mr. Edwards thought he observed a dark object shaped like a balloon just above the ship proper. They said it was going in a northwesterly direction, was not very high, and bright lights shone from what they supposed to be windows. So that one's not, like, as stupid as this next one is. Oh, yes. I'm excited. <laughs> You're fucking love it. It's a long one. <laughs> it's going to take a few minutes. But, yeah. Same newspaper, the Austin Weekly Statesman, May 3rd, 1897. So, that was... Let me look. The first one was June. Oh, so this one was before that last one. Okay. The title is, A Travis County Man Knows How to Build an Airship, But Won't Do It. (laughs) (laughs) So, let me read you. This is the whole article quoted. Oh, my God. In a burst of confidence yesterday, Uncle Dick Boyce informed a statesman reporter that Joe Costa had seen the airship sailing majestically through the deep blue sea of the heavens. Joe was hunted up and asked if he had seen the aerial mystery. I have not seen an airship, nor do I want to see one, he indignantly said. If I wanted to see an airship, I'd build one and I'd be done with it. I know exactly how one could be constructed. You know, I've watched buzzards, and a ship modeled after them will fly. A A buzzard carries with him a compressed air machine. And when he soars high up in the heavens, his body is a great deal larger than when he is working his wings and flying near the earth. The body of the buzzard is so constructed that it can compress the air to such a density as it material as to materially lighten its body. Air compressed two or three thousand two thousand or three thousand feet above the earth is much lighter than air down near the earth's surface. No bird can soar near the earth, and none of them do so. If I wanted to make an airship, I would construct it with buzzard-like mechanism. And after it was, w- after it was once h- up high above the earth, it would soar and stay up. Balloons have no trouble after they want- once get up high. During s- during Seab Sneed's lifetime, some twenty years ago, he and I set on to St. Louis and got three or four large balloons, which we went up on in Onion Creek. Oh God! We we heard from one of these balloons. Yeah, we heard from one of these balloons sometime after. It had drifted north and fell in a man's field on Red River not far from Paris. Then Mr. Costa had a faraway look in his eye and said, If I wanted if I wanted to, I could build an airship that would veer in a northwesterly direction, moving rapidly across the heavens and present two or three mysterious lights, just as we read 
the one scene now are doing. But I have no desire to interfere with interfere with the railroad but business in the in the country. If the city doesn't f- if the city doesn't floor the avenue bridge soon, I may build a small one for my private use so I can get to the city without danger to limb and life. I haven't seen an airship, nor do I believe anybody else has. What little liquor I drink doesn't affect me that way. <laughs> so this guy was saying that birds can't soar near the earth. Uh. That he was going to build a buzzard machine. And also that the higher up birds go, the bigger they get. It sounds like someone ate some bad mold. What, what is with these people and buzzards? Because that's like the fourth time you've mentioned people yeah. construct like constructing shit after buzzards. I'm guessing they just like buzzards. Like, why not? Why not maybe a dove or, or a sparrow? I don't know. <laughs> it I just w- seems like such an odd bird to pick. I wish I knew. Well, if you ever see, if you've ever seen a, an old western movie, the buzzards oh, yeah. are always around. Yeah, they're like so, the things with like the long necks, like pecking at shit. Right? I think they're yeah. There's like a sky like someone's like buried the, in the sand they're like, they're like the big arch ones. Yeah. I think that's an ostrich, isn't it? No, no, nah. no. Like the they're scavengers. They like pick at the, uh, the animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway. I searched through those old newspapers from 1894 to 1900 for Joe Costa, and I, which is the guy who said he'd build one, yes. and also flew to Paris, <laughs> and I couldn't find anything else on him, and he just seemed to be, he didn't seem to be anybody of importance, which means like, if he, he flew that to across the country. He probably ended up yeah. in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> no, I mean, if, Dude, if they made it to where he said, he would be in the news. Like, Have you heard oh, yeah. about that? What like it, like after I think World War One we used airships like for the navy and if they'd be flying over the ocean they get struck by lightning and just crash in the middle of the ocean. That like, would suck. Yeah, a lot. Wait, airships would get struck by lightning and it would just blow a hole in them. You mean? Well, no, like they used a. Uh, I think it's hydrogen. Oh, so it would just yeah, hydrogen explode then because it it Was wants it to react or, with anything or helium. It's hydrogen it hydrogen? because it only has one atom, I think, and so, then oh, it wants to like, connect more. It's extremely flammable, flammable, though, right? Yes. Oh, ye- okay. Hindenburg. That's the only thing I learned in chemistry this year. <laughs> <laughs> but I also searched from 1870, since you said Sieb Sneed was 20 years ago, so I went back to 1870 to 1900, Texas, and then I searched other states around that area. Yeah. And uh, the only Sieb Sneed one article I could find out of all those years and all those states was a first lieutenant in the Civil War, and his name was just fleetingly mentioned in an obituary. Dude. <laughs> but uh, some of the theories of the airships were that they were... Some, one that was that they were supernatural omens. Uh, some people thought they were from Edison-like inventors. And people, like a ton of people, actually thought it was Thomas Edison himself, and he had to make a public, public statement that it, he wasn't building the airships. And uh, some people thought they were hallucinations from bad alcohol, like we said. Professor G.W. Huff of Dearborn Observatory said that the sightings were atmospheric disturbance, distortions of the red-hued star Alpha or- Orionis or Betelgeuse. <laughs> Betelgeuse? Star Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse, or I don't know how to say it. And some thought they were just meteors, because a meteor can just fly in different directions in the sky. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have on it. I hope they were real. I hope they were, That'd like, some cool. inventor or, like, a breakaway civilization just, like, building their own shit. Yeah. Because that, that's just the coolest thing to me. But, yeah, that's all I have on it. I oh, hope boys. it's real, but it's probably not, unfortunately. You never know, man. Yeah, I you guess. You gotta believe. You gotta believe. believe. You gotta just Are you believe. a believer? Yeah. Are you? Of course. Are you? Who wouldn't be? Of course. Good. Do you want to go next with your ghost? <laughs> sure. Hey, that was the only. Here, let me put this glass orb away. Glass Drop testicle. It. My glass scrot. Scrotum. I can't right, believe you've so, done this. Hmm? I cannot believe you've done this. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, uh, the Queen Mary is an old luxury ship from the 30s. It was launched on September 26, 1934, and... It was taken out of service uh, on December 9th, 1967, and today it is uh, in Long Beach as a hotel, and it's they've it's pretty uh, historic. They've done a lot of well, I guess they is pretty general, but 
like people do lots of documentaries on it like for the ghosts aspect like BuzzFeed Unsolved I was just thinking about that yeah uh, on October 2nd, 1942, the Queen Mary was in an escort, part of, which was part of the Royal Navy. Actually, I skipped a set of notes. <laughs> um, during World War II, the Queen Mary was used as a troop ship, like taking people back from Canada to England and uh, America. Mm-hmm. And it was dubbed the Grey Ghost because it could move like really fast because it was meant to travel the ocean like three or four days. Like across from... That cross the Atlantic in three or four days. Yeah. Uh, on October 2nd, 1942, the Queen Mary was part of an escort, uh, part of the Royal Navy, uh, when it sliced through the HMS Kirakoa. Like, it was, there were 239 soldiers lost in the collision, and a large reason why there's so many deaths is that the escort was under strict orders not to stop for anything. Like, because they could be exposed to submarine fire if they stopped to help pick up, like, survivors. I have a question real quick. Yeah. I'm, I can't, I don't know if I'm thinking of the right crash, but is that how, because the uh, escorts were, like, zigzagging in front of exactly. them? Exactly. To, like, search for U-boats and mm-hmm. then, like, clipped one of them? Or? Yeah, it, it was, so the Queen Mary was moving at a constant speed, yeah. and this ship was just going like this, and like, it, it just caught up to it and split it in the middle. Oh, okay. Like, right down the middle. And, uh. Despite these orders, a ship did turn back and save 99 men, but still, that's, like, compared to how many people died, Yeah, that's that's pretty it's low. Like devastating. Yeah. yeah. And also, during the war, there's this, I'm not sure if this is true or not, I did more research about this, and I couldn't, like, the stories I did find, they just sounded more like a urban myth, or urban legends, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think I sat in gum. <laughs> you stretch so far. It's, like, it's fucking bubble gum, isn't it? Nobody knows what we're talking about. No. Nobody needs to. I'm unless sorry, you, unless fine. you're really good at inferring. <laughs> yeah, which is probably pretty easy, too. Nah. Um, uh, during World War II, there's a story of a chef being thrown into one of his ovens by the crew on board because they hated him oh so much. Oh, my God. Yeah. They just threw him in. Yeah. They Suck like, it. Yeah, <laughs> let's cook, let's cook them. <laughs> There's also a story of a man being killed under the pressure of a watertight door. Like I don't know if it was like a training thing or what, but he got caught under it and got smushed. smushed. Yes, yeah, smushed. Jinx. Dada. <laughs> there are also multiple people who have drowned in the ship's swimming pool, uh, who who are still said to roam, still said to roam around the pool in its deck. Right, like the the. Live people? What? They're still alive? No, like, they're good. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> it's amazing how many people didn't know how to swim back then. And Imagine... Ironic, you drown on a pool ex- in an ocean. Exactly, a floating that pool. That would suck. <laughs> <laughs> that's way less cool than just falling overboard. Yeah. Yeah. Just you drowned in the pool on a fucking <laughs> ship. <laughs> In 1936, the first ever captain of this ship uh, succumbed to a stroke in his room, which, that's... He was being stroked in his room? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he succumbed? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. In 1949, William Stark, the second officer, accidentally drank laundry detergent that was stored, that was, that was stored in a gin bottle. You know... So <laughs> your, your face right now was that was priceless. <laughs> you know, soap tastes bitter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So does alcohol though. <laughs> it burns. They, I guess they both burn, maybe. But I think you'd be able to tell the difference between soap and alcohol. Yeah, yeah I would Did definitely you just think keep that. Keep drinking it. He he drank enough to kill okay. himself. Was he already drunk? Because that makes a big difference. That is a very good point. I, if, I never even thought about that. Because you can get to that point where you don't taste the liquor anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. So if he was already trashed and he's like, I need more. That is I mean, true. He f- found his old bottle. He forgot it was... Well, he'd have to be, like, black out, like... Well, dude, there's old... Ca- you said he was a captain? Uh, his second officer. Oh, yeah, they used well, to still, get wasted, those, didn't those they? Those old sailors were fucking hard, dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in addition to those who drowned in the pool, a little boy is said to go on overboard on the same deck as the swimming pool, which... Mm. That's not bad as as bad as drowning. It's a little bit more badass. Yeah. yeah. Badass. <laughs> yeah. Badass. That was bad ass. <laughs> the Queen Mary has been voted one of the top, or 
one of the top 10 most haunted places in the country. And for good reason, I think is, you guys can kind of see. Why? Because of all the, all the deaths. Can you go back and like restart it? Because I'm lost. Wait, do you guys know what is really badass? Camaros? Safety. I thought you were about to say something very different. <laughs> oh, yeah? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you watch Always Sunny, you'll know what I mean. You know what's badass? Safety. Yeah. Saved you first. That's from 21 or 22 Jump Street. What? No. No, it was, it was when Country Mac fell off the motorcycle. You know what's uh, actually badass? Died. Safety. I thought, I thought you were saying, uh, you know it's not you know it's not lame? Safety. And then he uses that little winch to pull himself up to the top of a roof. I do not remember that. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in forever. Anyway, on the TV show Ghost Adventures, which, take this with a grain of salt. I don't like... Yeah, because, like, even even the people on the show have admitted that they fake shit. Yeah. But I've never watched it, because I can't get into it. I can't... I'm gonna say, like, I cannot take Zach Baggins. <laughs> like, like the, the main guy. He's, like, one of those, like gym bros but he's like super aggro to the ghost <laughs> it's it's just it makes me cringe every time I watch it well dude that's why I like BuzzFeed Unsolved so much when I first found them because that's like like legit like they're I, that's real they're not, they don't fake shit it's just like they never find anything and they're never yeah. there never is anything <laughs> it's just one person really freaked out and the other person's just making jokes the whole time. we used well, to watch that a lot mhm Oh yeah, dude! Remember, I remember the first time watching it with with you, in Aunt Carolyn's basement. Was that the night that we went to, fuck with Jordan when he was at his house? Fuck. I think we watched maybe a few episodes before then, but I remember the first episode. It was the Goatman's Bridge. Oh yeah, he like just stepped onto the bridge. He's like, "Fuck you, Goatman!" <laughs> <laughs> dude, I kind of want to watch that episode. That that's like the, that was the funniest episode. Yeah. I might, I would like to like watch it because I used I used to fall asleep to it, but it seemed like every time I'd fall asleep to it, I would wake up while like the freakiest episode had like the actual. Oh my god, dude! Exorcism. It was the one, the exorcism one. Yes, I would wake up with that on. Me too. That happened so many times, dude. One time I woke up <laughs> oh, to that episode. Remember how I used to, like my room used to be the basement at our mom's house. Yeah. Well, the basement had. This is just for people listening, because obviously you guys know, the basement. My bed was in like the far corner, and. It's like complete, like directly diagonal from the door that goes out to the garage. I woke up one night. That was playing the, the like the between door was wide open and the garage door was wide open. So I was looking out Dude. onto the street from my room and I was like, uh uh-uh. oh fuck, <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on? Because like there was they were not open. Was, was it in the middle asleep. of the night too? Yeah, dude, it was like two in the morning. They were closed and I went to bed because I didn't go to bed. And no one came home that. after you. I would have woken up, dude. Holy shit. Because they'd have gone through the door. Yeah, they would have had to have opened the door. The garage door was loud as shit. Yeah. I'd uh, be afraid someone broke in. I was. <laughs> Did you grab the AR? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I sleep with uh, my piece right at the the foot of my bed. Your BB gun? <laughs> yeah, my John Wayne <laughs> BB gun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, we've gotten way off track. Yeah. yeah. Anyway... On their episode uh, aboard the Queen Mary, they saw a full shadow person at the end of a corridor. Dude, shadow persons, like shadow people, freak me out. Th- this one? I do not like that. No. I watched it, I think I was maybe in fifth grade when this episode came out. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck is that? Wait, that's on what? Ghost Adventures? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I don't want to say all their stuff is fake. Yeah. But like... I think that one was real. That's the one... It makes it hard for me to believe because they admitted it. Like... Yeah. Well, like Steve-O said, if you fake something once, everything else is fake. Yeah. And it's true because I, I can't watch that show anymore. Yep. I used to love it until Ben told me he was like... You know Aaron admitted that like... I'm sorry, I ruined shit. Ghost Adventures. Just no, like... I'm, I'm glad you did because I don't want to watch fake stuff. Just like Patrick. What? Oh. Thomas. Patty Mayo. Patrick Fuck Thomas. you. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember when you guys Big wanted rape. to get a Crown Vic and cruise around? Those I think were... we, we went over that in one of the podcasts, didn't we? Yeah. yeah that that, was, that was, might have been the last scrapped one. one. That might have been the scrap. We will have to save that for a different time because we're getting, we're getting yeah. off topic. Yeah. All right. I don't have a whole lot of stuff left anyway. Uh, people say you can hear the screams of the sailors that the HMS Kirakoa in the bow of the ship where it just like split the ship in two. And uh, the remnants of the swimming pool, they wander the pool deck and whatever's down there. 
and uh, even a woman in white dances alone in one of their ship's rooms, which would, if I woke up to that, like, if it was just one of us sleeping in a room, and I woke up to that, I would shit my pants. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you excited to see what we're going to see in the woods in two weeks? Nah. I am. Missing 411. Never return. It's, it's going to be, and I don't know if Terry's going yet. I, I still have to ask him, but if, if he doesn't go, it's just going to be Jordan and I alone. Yeah. In the woods at night. You. No. Oh. I'm not drinking in the woods. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How funny would that be? Do you know? Do you know? That, do you know what it is badass, man? Safety. Drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> Iced tea. Kitty Dude, stone. I had to yeah. drink. <laughs> I was only allowed to drink iced tea at work the other day in the ninety degree weather. You were only allowed to? Because we didn't have any bottles of water for watch, anyone. Watch out! That iced tea will calcify, and you'll get stones. Yeah, I know. Ben knows. Yeah, I know. Wait, I know you that had life. One too? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, you, you did. You like, a ton of but times. But you, yeah, you pissed it out, too, right? I didn't have to. What? I, I had lemon water once, and I never had to piss, because it, I guess it, like, ate the rock. I thought you had to piss. I should try that, <laughs> if I ever get another one. I never had to piss it out. Because you just eat a whole lemon? No. <laughs> Ask no. me lemon water? No, I mean, I guess if you eat a lemon, it worked, I drank lemon but... laxatives about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> I guess you're never getting stones. <laughs> You'll be getting uh, colon stones. <laughs> <laughs> shit stones. Well, maybe shit the acid stones. in the lemon will break up your shit in your colons. <laughs> maybe. So you actually go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I guess we should get into um, horseshoe crabs. What? <laughs> yep. Are you all done, man? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. This is going to be this is gonna be interesting. All what? right? So... Horseshoe crabs have been around for 300 million years. Wow, really? Yes. They're like one of the oldest species on Earth. But one of the weird thing is, one of the weird things is we use their blood to test a lot of vaccines. Why? Because it tells you what kind of bacteria is in them, if there's deadly bacteria for humans. So we're going to be using horseshoe crabs to test coronavirus vaccines. So we need a shitload of blood from them. And whenever you, like, look at the pictures, um, they have them, like, literally hooked up to, like, blood-giving machines. And they're, like, taking a little bit of blood out of the horseshoe crabs. And then they put them back in the ocean. It's kind of like giving blood. And they're hoping that it's not going to kill them all. But it's killing, like, 30% of them so far. So we're running out of them. Dude, I can get you horseshoe crabs. (laughs) How so? I got a guy. Oh, yeah? Yep. Where's he from? That's all I can say. Shit. I can get I can get you horseshoe crabs. Just right. take it. <laughs> well, I saw something today on. Al? S- hmm? Al, the horseshoe crab guy. Ben. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, is it Al- Albert? I know Albert. No, Al. Albert Thomas. Guy. Al Thomas. No. Yeah. Al, just Al. No, Al Thomas. I- I'm allowed to. Say- He's gonna be pissed. He's not gonna do anything. All right. I like to see him. I like to see him try. Anyway. Anyways. Uh, the horseshoe crabs basically are going extinct because we are using so many of them. And then today when I got on Snapchat, you know how their their stories are all like blown out of proportion? Who's they? Gloom? Yes. Yeah. It was like, uh, like for the first time ever, it was like horseshoe um, crabs are curing coronavirus. And I was like, what? <laughs> like it wasn't like. Good horseshoe, news. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> horseshoe, horseshoe crabs. crabs yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't horseshoe crabs could cure coronavirus. It was like they're curing coronavirus. And then I then I read it, and they're not really. It was just a clickbait. They're um, working very hard right now to cure coronavirus. The horseshoe the, crabs in their underground sea faring barrows. I wonder if they're burrows. the ones who made the airships. Whoa. Are they the ones? Well, they're who so old. Queen Mary crash. Dude, they probably were because they they're crabs. <laughs> she just got a little itchy. <laughs> I, I was talking about the sea crabs. Queen Mary has crabs. Oh, I thought you meant pubic lice. No. Wait. No. Is there a difference? Is there a difference between lice and crabs? Yes. Well, yeah. One one resides south, and one resides well, in the no, north. Not just south. One resides in your head hair. The other resides in coarse hair. Like your hair. I had to do a presentation on it in high school. Yikers. I don't think I had to do one. 
crabs. The more you know. The more you know, the better. The best thing to do is to not get them. Yeah. And then whenever, whenever you do, you might as well just put down like a layer of sand so they can breed and then eventually move on. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> They'll just pack up and go to someone else? Yeah. It, well, think about it this way. If you get a solid enough amount of sand and it builds up and hardens over time, you can just scoop it up and just place it like at the beach. That's a very good point. I think the best thing to do if you have crabs, honestly, is to set yourself on fire. Well, they did that. Remember <laughs> Trailer what? Park Boys? Where they lit the, where he lit his pubes on fire? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the Zippo fluid or yeah. whatever? <laughs> I mean, that would work, I'm assuming. Yeah, but it'd burn your, your dick and your balls yeah. and your taint. Well, it wouldn't. Is it worth it? It would burn the crabs. I was going to say it would burn the crab out of you. It would. <laughs> crab meat. would be lots of crab meat. <laughs> Anyways. Um, Jordan, you can probably take that to Red Lobster and maybe get a bonus. Um, Extra crab meat. No. <laughs> I'll take the chilies. <laughs> Why chilies? Because. Because we have the meats. We have the meats at chilies. Isn't that Arby's? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm McLovin' it at Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> oh god actually I said that to my mom before uh, she dropped me off at your house what you're McLovin it no I said I McLove you mom oh McLove McLovin that's good also um I think that the people who are riding around in their cars with masks on are crazy if they're alone if you're alone in a car without other people in the car what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing man <laughs> Even if you are, I mean, you gotta have some trust that they aren't sick if you're giving them a ride in your car. Like, yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing: it's just we're delaying the process, kind of, by what we're doing. Well, it's just it's a, like everyone, like how we're closing everything back down again. Yeah, we can't eat out anymore because. Coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to protect the old people, and everyone go about their lives. Protect the old and weak. Yep. Like a true Viking? Like a Viking. We're Vikings. We need to be Vikings, America. (laughs) Be a Viking. Cure Corona. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Well, there you go. If you want um, the cure to coronavirus, it's in horseshoes. Crabs. (laughs) So. Horseshoes. Not in horseshoes. Don't don't, don't go by buying horseshoes because you're just going to have a ton of metal in your house. (laughs) What? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> call Al Thomas if you want to buy it's some. not Al Thomas I told you it's a different guy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Call. are you, tr- are you trying to get us to lose our, our podcast are you trying to get us hurt he's not going to do anything you're going to piss Al off he won't do shit okay, okay. Jordan's not going to be on the next podcast because he's going to be fucking whack he's going to be dead he's going to be Dude, in, a, in a bag Al of don't know crabs. shit Al don't know shit he knows how to kill Come a man. Come at me, Al. He knows how to make a horseshoe crab come. Oh, wait. You're talking- <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Wait. You're talking about Mafia Al. Wait. 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 What? Are you- Shut the fuck up. Are you talking about Mafia Al? Yes. Fuck! No, no shit, didn't- Mafia Al. I didn't Al. know that's who you were talking- I'm not going to be on the next podcast. I just hope he knows that I was defending him. Yeah. Anyways, we I'm both sorry. Were. Al, I'm sorry. We should probably end this. Please don't. Please don't. Before Jordan Please gets don't. Ended. Yeah. Please don't. I'm ending this. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. No. no. My grandchildren. No. Stay no. cool.